So I'm here at the famed Dark Horse Vineyard of Inniskill and Okanagan Estate, and I was supposed to be having a chat with winemaker and viticulturalist Shandor Meyer, but for some reason there's been a bit of a mix-up, and they've got me picking grapes. Hello. Can I help you to harvest some Pinot Noir grapes? Hi, are you Shandor? Uh, yes. Hi, yes, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Man, I thought we were been talking about Pinot, but I, I've been making my way up the rows oh, picking really? grapes oh, for yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got some beautiful grapes here, and I've noticed over the years that Pinot Noirs seem to have gotten darker and darker in color. Yes. <laughs> Why is that? Yes, it's true. Well, viticulture is trying to balance the possible a most ideal yield at the vineyard means that we don't want to overproduce this variety. In fact, getting not too low crop, but, but uh, the right crop level per acre gives you a better concentration. Also, viticulture is uh, taking care of the canopy, leaf removal, shoot thinning, bunch thinning. So by end of the season, they get a nice ripe, uh, even fruit for the winemakers. And how about tonnage? Are you really monitoring how, how much grapes you're growing per acre here? Yes, yes, we average about three tons per acre, which is not, not, not too low, but not, not certainly not on the high, uh, high level per acre. So this way I, uh, I will get a nice even fruit, fully ripe. When we crush these grapes, I use a special yeast and a fermentation technique in order to get the concentration and a, and a possible uh, best potential out of the grapes. Now, Pinot Noir, unless I'm mistaken, is a, a thin-skinned variety. Does that present any problems when you're cultivating it? At harvest time, if the weather is moist and, and too wet, there the might uh, occur some botrytis rot in the grapes. Also, if botrytis attacks uh, blue-colored berries, uh, that fungus destroys the color in that. So we certainly want to take off any rot or uh, the best uh, thing is just to produce a healthy fruit. So there's no, absolutely no botrytis berries in the fruit. Now I know you spend some of your time working with Pinot Blanc as well. Yes. How come, if it's a relative of Pinot Noir, is it so much easier to harvest? They, I've never heard them refer to Pinot Blanc as a heartbreak grape. <laughs> no. Well, uh, Pinot Blanc looks a little bit easier to produce. If, if uh, you manage the vineyard properly and get the right uh, time the grapes into the cellar when the, the sugar acidity in balance. It's certainly you can produce a nice uh, table wine with a nice fruit and acidity but with Pinot Noir we're dealing with uh, certainly more depth in aromas and flavors and color and tannin and, and etc. So it's more difficult. And with the finished Pinot Noir, obviously you like to drink them as well as make them. That's right. Is there a particular food that you think might go well with it? Certainly with, with uh, chicken or, or a lighter type of uh, foods, uh, it certainly uh, would go well. I find it is one of those wonderful crossover grapes yes. that breaks the rule of white wine with fish, red wine with meat. Yes. Because hardier seafoods like salmon or rich scallops or even halibut, I think can go very well with a exactly. Pinot Noir. Exactly, it, it certainly would. So I know that uh, you need to get back to the winery and start crushing some of these grapes. Shall I come with? Well, I would suggest to stay because you got to go to end of the row, you know, so there's still time to go. <laughs> I'll see you down there. See you. Mm -hmm.